I'd like to say hello to Stedman Grove. Thank you, man. How are you? Thank you. Thank you. There it is. How about doing wow. much? <laughs> yeah, we're doing much. Uh, thanks for coming in, man. How are yeah, you? glad to be here. Thank you for having me. Of course, things are all right? Yeah, everything is good. Busy. There's, I want to talk about the book and identity, but you came up for the, the Black Film Festival. Talk to me about this. You've done it before, been a part of this one, but this is amazing. In Montreal, and they asked me to come up to uh, do a community event. Uh, on identity development, yeah. teach people how to find out who they are. So much of the conversation around identity for people certainly has bounced up other people's perception of them and how and your place in society, but much of what you talk about is way more about an internal control and self-reliance in a say or self-determination. It's not being defined by the socially constructed messages which are labels which are on the outside, race, I can't make it because of the color of my skin wrong. You know, you believe that, then you're, you're, you're stuck for the rest of your life. I can't make it because I'm a woman, I live in a man's world, socially constructed label, wrong. Uh, you're defined by your house and your money and your car and your religion. I'm often defined by my relationship, you know, so people put me in that box. Uh, and I so, thought you were in a relationship, I didn't. Yeah, yeah, well, I just, I wanted to throw that out there, okay? Do we, do we, do we know her or? Uh... <laughs> you know her, yeah. <laughs> And yeah. so you get put in that box. And so the point is, is not how the world defines you, which is my message, it's how you define yourself. The question is, do you have the tools to define yourself? Most people don't because, George, because they're stuck in a box doing the same thing over and over. They wake up in the morning, they wash their face, they brush their teeth, they get something to eat, they get the kids off to school, they work all day, they come on the afternoon, they spend time with the family, they watch TV, they go to bed and that's Monday. On Tuesday, they do the same thing. Yeah. Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, you understand? And uh, if you did the same thing you did yesterday as you would do today, as you would do tomorrow, what have you done? Nothing. And then you're enslaved by the educational system that teaches you how to memorize, take tests, repeat information back, get labeled with a grade, and two weeks later you forget the information. Yeah. So nothing from nothing is nothing. And if you don't know who you are, you're not able to take the information and the education and make it relevant to your talent, to your skills, to your passions, and what you love. Now, if you can do that, you can begin to think. And once you begin to think, then you can become who you, who you can become based on your potential as a human being. Was there a shift in you? Was there a, a well, Absolutely a shift in me, because I grew up in a family of two disabled brothers, mm -hmm. low self-esteem, lack of confidence in myself. I grew up, um, I, basketball was my way out because it gave me enough self-esteem not to destroy myself. Later on in life, I worked in the prison system. Yeah. Uh, five years, and so I, there's no question I would have been in prison in that system except for the fact that I, I did play basketball and I had enough belief in myself not to, not to destructively destroy myself. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I went to college, played ball in Europe, uh, serving the U.S. Army. Um, you know, again, you know, um, everybody knows I'm in a relationship with Oprah, I've met her, uh, and uh, realized through all of that process that I was stuck on race for about 32 or 33 years and realized it's not about your race. It's about you don't know who you are. And you let all of these obstacles get in your way. Did someone tell and you And you that? can't define yourself. No, I discovered that because I traveled around the world with this guy named Bob Brown. We traveled all around the world. I realized, oh, the whole world is not focused on race. You know, it's a lot of people black in the, in the world who are making things happen. You mentioned off the top how people were defining you by your relationship with Oprah. Was that a struggle for you in the beginning? Well, it, it's, it's, uh, it's always a struggle because that's, you know, they, would, they wouldn't even say your name. They wouldn't even say good morning. Yeah. And they wouldn't say hi. And now so you, you walk yeah. into corporate America, they say, well, we're not interested in you. Where's your, where's, where's your girl? Yeah. So, so if you deal with that worldwide and everywhere you go, it's about how you manage your feelings. And can you manage yourself well enough to be able to not to go off, mm -hmm. not to get upset, to be able to handle yourself. That's not an external process, that's an internal process. So the most important thing you can do is what? With all the fame and all the things that you do, you know, you're, st you're a star here, the most important thing you can do is manage your what? Feelings. Yeah. How do you treat people? Are you humble? Do you care? Um, how much grace you know, do you have? How care? much grace do you have? Do you go in the restaurant? You expect this, expect that. You know, you work out your ego as opposed to your humility. 
something you can look at. You should write a book about the fact that in the 1974 season, look at your numbers, man. You were 75% from the free throw line. You were averaging 15.2 points what? a game. Look at that. I'm looking for this. I've look been at looking that. for this. Look at that number, man. You're third on the team, but you wow. could have been second on the team. You know, Harvey Kessler went pro Yeah. Yeah. for 13 years. He's an exceptional player. What did Russell Berry say? So Where did you get? You, you, I'm tell we got a team, man. This is it. <laughs> I got this, too. I wanted to give you this just because I think you should take this. Yeah. That's an important speech. Wow. You're tell, so special. Tell them what that is. That's special, Thank right? You. Well, this is George H. White, uh, who founded our town. Um, and uh, our family was the first family asked. In fact, he was a part of our family that came down. He was a former congressman doing Reconstruction that came down and wanted to create a town called Whitesboro so that um, African Americans or black people could have a town that they could create freedom in within their own town and educate their own people. We had our own school. Uh, we had businesses and everything like that. So, I mean, he is, he's a hero uh, in our town and um, really kind of understated, but uh, was a tremendous force uh, during the Reconstruction. It's important to have that in part, in part of your history. Can I keep this? It's for you. Thank you so much. You are you're a special guy. No. Stick around more with Stephen Graham right after this. All right, coming up, what are the chances that Stedman's favorite movie to kick it and watch with Oprah stars Oprah? So many times I've had rainbows in my clouds. People who've been kind to me, who said, you don't have to do that. I believe you can do better. Some ones were black and some were white. Some were Spanish-speaking, some were Native American, some were gay and some were straight, fat and thin and pretty and plain. People lifted me up and said, I believe in you. You can do better. And so I realized that that was given to me, and all I have as a response is to prepare myself so I can give that to somebody else who is yet to come. Something, huh? Very special. Yeah. Yeah. When we did the Oprah tour, she kept talking about how important Dr. Angelo was to her. Who was it to you? Did you have that kind of mentor? Uh, I had so many mentors. Yeah. Uh, my community, number one. My mother and father, number one. What about your mother? Well, my parents did the best they could based on what they knew. If they'd have known better, they'd have done better. They did a pretty good job yeah. based on what they could do. And so when I and kids have to forgive their parents more you often have to than they do. Forgive your parents. You have to the forgiveness is about the forgiveness is for you. Mm -hmm. Forgive you, forgive your circumstances, and then move on, and then be able to live in the present and, and live out of your imagination, live in the future. There's a lot of people who think that if you get rid of, if you have money and power, or whatever, that it all goes away, but it just doesn't work that way, does it? Well, the success can take you out. The easiest way to take you out is mess with your ego and you start thinking that you're really somebody special. Yeah. And you're no different than, ever, ever, than anybody else. You know, you may have a show that amplifies your talents and skills, and so a lot of people get to see you. But the fact of the matter is you're the same. Mm -hmm. And when you start thinking you're different, then you start to have problems. You come up for this film festival, what's the one film that you need everybody to see? If, if it's about a black film festival. Well, like if there's it. one film I want everybody to see, it's The Butler. Yeah. <laughs> Beautiful film. Did you watch it with her by yourself? Yeah, yeah. It was, it's unbelievable. It must be fun to watch her. Night. You've seen her in the nonfiction world for so long. To see her do that again must be fun. It's great to see her reinvent herself. So she has a new network. She's had a magazine. Now she's working on film. Mm -hmm. And she's touring the world. And so it's great to see her not stop. Keep going and keep putting the message out. Do you guys ever have that moment where you can just get to sit in the couch and flip through the channels and stumble on a movie and we're going to watch this? Yeah, we, yeah, we get the chance to have some 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 great times. Together. What's the one movie that you part. have to watch with her? The Butler. <laughs> <laughs> it's a pleasure to see you. Thank you so much. <laughs> 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 Identity, a passport to success. We'll be right back.